Uh, and we invite those that are tuning in by way of Facebook Live to join in on this praise party. Amen. The praise party has already begun here at Love Fellowship Church. Uh, we are lifting up the name of Jesus where Jesus is Lord, where his love abounds, where his grace abounds. And we welcome you that are tuning in all around the world by way of Facebook Live, by way of YouTube. We welcome you. We invite you into this praise party. It's a celebration that's going on right now. And I'm going to open us up in prayer. We've already been praying and praising, but we're going to invite you into prayer and praise as you're tuning in by way of Facebook Live today and YouTube. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for your great and awesome power, your mighty hand at work in our lives. We have great expectation, oh, for deliverance. We have great expectation for healing. We have great expectation for miracles, signs, and wonders to be performed uh, in this service and in our lives. God, we thank you today that souls will be saved, that people will be set free and delivered, even in the praise and the worship, God. Ah, we remember in the scripture that Saul, King Saul, when he was vexed with a demonic spirit, he, he called for David to play the harp. Ah, and the Bible says that that spirit left King Saul when the music, amen, was, was set forth. We, were, we remember King Jehoshaphat, Ah, he sent the he sent the worshipers out. He sent the praisers out to fight before the battle. The battle was won without even one arrow being a man shot in the air. The battle was won through the praise and the worship. God, we know that as we praise you, we're not just singing songs, but God, we're opening up our hearts to you. We're inviting you in to our homes, to our hearts, to our minds. God, we want the atmosphere to be set this morning in the worship, in the praise. We want the atmosphere for miracles, signs, and wonders to be set this morning so that even when the word is preached, it won't be any doubt that we are ready to receive it because the atmosphere is already set. Oh God, I'm decreeing and declaring right now that even before the word goes forth, even in praise and worship, just like Saul received his deliverance, just like Jehoshaphat, amen, saw the victory, God, people will receive their deliverance in the praise and in the worship. God, they'll begin to see victory in the praise and in the worship. God, healing will manifest in the praise and in the worship your holy name Jesus you said if we if you be lifted up you would draw me to yourself so in this praise and worship time we're going to do the lifting and we ask that you do the drawing and we thank you now we praise you now in Jesus name come on praise team and worship your God hallelujah
do you know your purpose? That you have a greater purpose. And your purpose is in worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, oh God. Lift your hands and more importantly, lift your heart. Because we want to touch the hem of his garment. We want to press into the presence of God. We want to come from a sincere place and tell him to worship him. Say that again. 
bow down here I am to say that you are my God how many of you know he's all together lovely he's all together Come on and bless your God. Saul, when David, keep playing, keep playing, when David was just starting out serving Saul, and he was known as a harp player at that time. He played the harp or the string instrument. And it was interesting that Saul knew that in his mind, he was demon possessed. He knew that he had some issues, some trouble. Uh, he knew that, amen, he was vexed with demon spirits. But he had enough faith at that time to, to call in David as a worshiper. David was a worshiper. And as he called David in, he... <laughs> would ask David to play <laughs> and the Bible describes how amen in that exchange those spirits were broken off of King Saul I want to submit to you that worship is not something we turn on and off <laughs> but it's a lifestyle my God and I want to also amen submit to you that when you worship God you go in harder when you need to break through. <laughs> Amen. David, my God, was not the source of Saul's breakthrough. Uh, it was God, but it was in the worship of God. Mm. I decree and declare right now, even as you're, amen, sitting at home, some of you need to get up off of your bed and stand up. Even as you're in the living room, some of you need to get off of your, amen, couch and stand up. You may be multitasking. You may be trying to watch TV and this video, amen, this live service at the same time. I want to, amen, challenge you to turn the TV off and connect with God. Here we ought to worship him. Huh? Here we ought to declare. Come on and sing some more. That here we ought to say that he is our God. I don't know about you, but this world needs a breakthrough. This world needs a breakthrough. Huh? This plague has not quite lifted yet. This world needs a breakthrough. People are going through in their finances. People are having problems in their homes. This world needs a breakthrough. There are many people like Saul. They're vexed with all kinds of problems and challenges. But yet, amen, in the worship, faith can be broken off. In the praise, in the lifting of your hands, amen. It's not a hard thing to get on your feet and let the Lord 
when that express purpose of experiencing your presence and in your presence, oh God, there is fullness of joy. Ah. There's power in our praise. I said there's power in your praise. If a wicked king like Saul could see demons break off of him as a result of his worship, what amen can happen to you? <laughs> wow. When you stop multitasking and really get focused on God. My God, when you stop, amen, going here and there, tossing to and fro in your mind and in your life, and you really, really get focused on God, what can God do for you? What can the Lord do for you? See, I'm calling it out today. God showed me, he said, there are too many people that try to multitask, and I am one of the three things that they're trying to focus in on. See, God doesn't want to be the third thing that you focus it wants to be the main thing that you focus in on. I know you can multitask, but God doesn't want you to multitask when it comes to worshiping His name, when it comes to praising His name, when it comes to magnifying and glorifying His holy name. Ah, uh, He wants your divine attention. He wants your devotion all of you, not just a third part of you, uh -huh. don't give him a third part, give him your heart, uh -huh. I need to say it again, don't give him a third part, give him your heart, give God your heart in worship, give him your heart, don't give him a third part, we've gotten so good at multitasking in this pandemic, we got so good at doing four and five things at the same time. That's not Bible. Not when it comes to God, that's not Bible. You can't get what you need from God. And he's the third part of your life. No, 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 no. He's gotta be the center of your life. We used to sing a song called Jesus is the center of our joy. All we ever hope for, all we ever need is found in him. Oh, I wish I could sing, but I can't, but I know how to worship. Because see, worshiping is beyond singing. Hallelujah. Worshiping is devotion. Worshiping is humbling yourself. Worshiping is surrendering yourself. Worshiping is, my God, lifting hands in an act of surrender, lifting hearts, opening your minds unto the God that created you, unto the God that provides all of your needs according to His riches and glory. Worshiping is not about a performance. It's about a relationship. It's about a relationship with your God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And in the house of prayer today, we create an atmosphere of worship. We create an atmosphere of breakthrough. We create an atmosphere for uncommon things to manifest in our lives. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. of God. He's a way maker. How many of you believe that? <laughs> I say he's a way maker. He's a problem solver. He is the great I am. You didn't come here to stay bound up. You came in to get free. We are free in Jesus. We are free today. When the son Jesus 
the Christ sets free is free indeed. The heart of a worshiper. The heart of a worshiper. Hallelujah. Ah, you may not be able to sing a lick, but you can be a, you can have a heart of a worshiper today. You can have the heart of a worshiper to magnify his name. To exalt his holy name. Father, we thank you this morning, God, that we come humbly before your throne. Jesus, you said that your house was called the house of prayer for all people. And we're in the house of prayer today. <laughs> in live service, God, we're, in, we're coming into the homes of people all around the world right now in the name of Jesus. But God, we can't do it without you. We cannot live without you. We cannot, ah, we cannot thrive without you. We need you for every step, for every breath that we breathe and take. God, we need you in the name of Jesus. We have the heart of a worshiper this morning. Knowing that only you, God, could bring us through and bring us out. Mm. Lord, let the words that we speak, let the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O oh God. For you are a great Lord, our great Redeemer, Jesus, our Savior. We bow down in our spirits before you right now God we have no other option you are our only option we make you our only option for every decision that we have to make you are our only choice God we choose you <laughs> we choose you today we choose you God not our will but Thine will be done. Your will be done in our lives. Your will be done. Every decision, let it be a God decision. Every word, let it be a God-rooted and God-breathed word. Every action, let it be God-led action. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy over you today that God says I'm giving you the answers to the questions. I'm giving you the answers to the problems that you cannot solve. The Lord said, I am your God. <laughs> I am your Redeemer. I am that I am. I am the first and I am the last. The Lord says, trust me today. <laughs> trust me today with your whole heart. Trust me today. Lord, we trust you. We trust you today. Come on, trust the Lord. We trust you today, God. We trust you today. Like our very lives depend on it. We trust you today, God. We trust you. Father, we pray for our children. <laughs> ah, even our grown children, even our adult children. God, we pray that they would learn how to trust you, God. Even as we are trusting you, we pray that our children would trust you, God. Our adult children, our teenage children, our middle school children, God, our primary and elementary school children, that they would trust you. God, that they would trust you, that they would be taught how to trust you in those that we have raised to trust you that it would turn back to you God this is our heart's cry our heart's cry of worship that you are the source of our supply we trust you today God we trust you today the Lord says there are some that are in a place where They've got some critical decisions that they have to make. But I hear the Lord say, I am your source. I am the source. I am the answer. 
I am the truth and I am the life the Lord says trust me the Lord says when you hear from me you'll have peace in other words if you don't have peace about the decision don't make that decision the Lord says any decision that I give it will come with peace it will be packaged in peace for the Lord God is Jehovah Shalom the God of peace if you're uneasy about that thing the Lord says wait don't act on it because whatever God gives you as a decision as an answer to your problem it will be packaged in peace if it's not packaged in peace then you back off of it if peace is not a part of the decision then you do not make that decision the Lord says he is Jehovah Shalom he is the God of peace he is the God of peace the Lord said I am the God of peace and we need to let the peace of God which surpasses all of our natural understanding rest rule and abide in our hearts and our minds according to Philippians 4 verses 6 through 8 be anxious for nothing but in everything through prayer and supplication make your request known unto God and the God of all peace he'll give you that answer but if it's not packaged in peace the Lord says wait don't act on it don't act on it if if there's disagreement don't act on it if there's division in the home don't act on it the Lord said that is not of me I'm a God of unity oneness peace receive that today in Jesus name see when we enter into a heart of worship we get prophetic things we get things that we did not even ask for we get the heart of God today I want to open up a series <laughs> I want to open up a series entitled uncommon uncommon everybody say uncommon uncommon <laughs> uh, the Lord spoke to me a few days ago maybe a week ago and he said in this season expect the uncommon he says for those that will have the faith to believe and take me at my word the Lord says he is about to do uncommon things in our life the Lord says expect uncommon favor and uncommon results the title of this message is uncommon 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 my God God spoke to me last Monday uh, really last Sunday last Sunday I believe it was he he told me he said son I need you to do something uncommon <laughs> he said I need you to amen drive three hours and 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 I need you to sow a seed I say wow we were just getting back from vacation uh, for our 25th wedding anniversary, my wife and I, and, and, and we got back uh, late, amen, Saturday night, and we were in church on Sunday, in the house of God, rather, on Sunday, and, and the Lord, my God, didn't even give me an opportunity to, to rest uh, on Labor Day Monday. He said, get back in the car and drive amen and and i need you to do something uncommon and he said i need you to teach the people about uncommon things well on the way uh i was on i-85 and uh, the lord said now go back over to the land go back over to the land i said well god i thought you said go to georgia he said i just need you to obey me go back over to the land when i went over to the land can we can we pull it up adrian on the when I went over to the land, amen, I saw something that I was not expecting. Huh? I saw what you see on the screen right now. I saw the church sign, the new sign going up. That may not be anything to you, but that was huge to me because over two years ago, October 2018, we put up a sign that, amen, that we thought was going to be the right sign and the right contractor, but it turned out not to be so. But the Lord said to me, see, when you obey me, you get the 
things that you did not expect. He said, that's a part of being uncommon. Ah. So as you see that sign, it is a sign. It is a sign that God is moving in our lives. Let me give you a definition of the word uncommon from the Webster. Uncommon means unusual. <laughs> uncommon means above the ordinary. Uncommon means exceptional. And uncommon means remarkable. Wow. So now let me go back to the prophetic statement that I made. God says in this season, expect the uncommon. Ah. Now let me put in the Webster definition. That means expect the unusual. Ah. He said expect the things that are above the ordinary. Expect the exceptional and expect the remarkable. Everybody say uncommon. The Lord said, I am about to release uncommon favor and uncommon results. Mm. And you may be asking, well, Pastor Anthony, I want that. I want that for my life. I want that for my family. I want that for my children. And God wants you to have it. But we've got to teach you, amen, in the scripture in this series Ah, what it, what it really means to operate in the realm of the uncommon. <laughs> See, common is the opposite of uncommon. But common is not a bad thing. We're going to prove that in a moment. But uncommon is above common. It's above the ordinary. It's exceptional. And you may be saying, well, in 2020, how can anything be uncommon how can I experience the exceptional? Well, guess what? If the devil can release a plague that's a hundred year plague and that be uncommon, meaning we have not seen something like that in our lifetime, why do you doubt God? <laughs> why do you say God cannot do the uncommon in your life? If you are wearing a mask, which I have my mask, amen, I only take it off when I'm ministering, I put it back on afterwards, but you wear a mask because the devil released something that was uncommon that nobody that's alive right now except for those that are over a hundred years old has ever seen so don't tell me that amen uncommon things cannot manifest because we're living in an uncommon world right now we're dealing with uncommon situations but unfortunately, amen, we've been paying attention to the devil's uncommon moves. I'm not talking about the devil's uncommon moves. You get that on the news every day. You see it for yourself every day. This series of uncommon is about God's uncommon moves. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're teaching when we're talking about the uncommon. My God, let's go to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, and we're starting this morning at verse number 22. Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse number 22. And notice what it says here. And I'm reading out of the King James Version. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. And to go before him unto the other side. While he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away. He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come. He was there alone. Wow. So Jesus told the disciples. Listen I need you to go on. To the other side of the sea. And I'm going to stay here on the mountain side. And I'm going to pray. And the disciples obeyed Jesus. And they got in the boat or the ship. And they went to the other side. 
Notice verse number 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Wow. Tossed with waves. For the wind was con contrary. <laughs> uh, that means the wind, my God, was stirring up. The wind, my God, was, was causing them great, amen, challenge. The wind was tossing them to and fro. Verse number 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Mm. So they go from, amen, common things to uncommon things. And it happened in the fourth watch. The fourth watch is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. I want to submit to you, amen, that as we laid out the definition of uncommon, I want to submit to you that, amen, for most of us, it's uncommon to be up that time of morning. <laughs> and most of us are not up that time of morning because we operate in a common mentality. But Jesus, amen, was beginning to teach them by his actions and his words how to be uncommon. <laughs> See, the fact that he came to them walking on the water was already an uncommon action. When he was on the mountainside praying, that was what we call common. They understood that. They could recognize that. They could, under, they could believe that. That Jesus, amen, told them to pray. In fact, when he told them to get in the ship, they were obedient to his instructions. And that too was common. Being common is not bad. It is absolutely a part of our life cycle. But God says in this season, he wants to teach us how to operate in uncommon favor and how to get uncommon results. Here it is. Between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., which is uncommon for us to be up, amen, we normally are sleeping at that time. Jesus was moving and walking on the water. Ah. Somebody ought to be getting a picture of this. Notice uh, verse number 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit and they cried out in fear. At this moment, you would have thought that they would have caught hold of the uncommon actions that Jesus was flowing in, but they did not. Instead, they were stuck in a common mentality. <laughs> See, common, can be good, but it also can be bad. In a negative sense, when, we're, when our mentality is common, we only expect what we already know to continue to happen. Mm. But God was, a, was using Jesus to introduce something that they'd never seen before, something that was uncommon. <laughs> I want to submit that some of you right now sitting in this live service, you, amen, are being set up by God through his word for some uncommon favor and some uncommon results. Some of you on Facebook Live right now are getting a hold of this word and you're decreeing and declaring, I am ready for the uncommon. I am ready for the uncommon. How many of you ready for the uncommon? Ah, why is it that the devil can only do uncommon things and we accept it? But then when we teach about uncommon things in the word, we doubt. My God. Come on. This plague, it is truly uncommon. Yes. In January, nobody thought about a plague. In February, nobody thought about a plague. But when it hit us, it hit us. And it was an uncommon hit. But I want to 
submit to you that God is saying the devil is not the only one that has uncommon actions. And uncommon favor and results only come from God. Notice going back in your going back to the word of God. It says in verse 26 that when they saw Jesus. Now they were doing the common thing. They were in the boat. That's common. Stay in the boat. There's a storm. Stay in the boat. But Jesus wasn't doing the common thing. Remember now, he told them to go to the other side. Did anybody not think, well, how is Jesus going to get to the other side? <laughs> he told us to go, but he said he'd meet us over there. How is he going to meet us over there? See, that should have been a clue that Jesus was not going to function in a common way. <laughs> But he was about to teach them how to live and on another level and another realm, another dimension called the uncommon realm. Where he was going to produce some uncommon favor and uncommon results. So they, they should have got a clue when he gave them the, them the instructions to get on the boat and go to the other side. But they were too common in their thinking. In order for you to get this word today, you got to let go of your mentality that you can't see beyond what you can see. Huh? This teaching is about those that are ready to stretch their faith and see beyond what they can see. Notice, they were fearful. They were troubled. They thought that Jesus was not Jesus, but they thought he was a ghost. They thought he was a monster. They thought, hey amen, have you ever had a bad dream? And my God, it seems like the devil is it put some sort of nightmare in your head and you wake up in sweats and you wake up shaking and you wake up scared. And my God, you just think it was so real, but it was just a false, it was just false evidence appearing to be real. That's fear. And that's what they were experiencing. They were experiencing fear. Fear allowed their minds to play tricks on them. To think that it was not Jesus. But it was some sort of demonic ghost that was trying to get them like a boogeyman. That's what fear will always do to you. It will play tricks on your mind. Fear is false evidence appearing to be real. You can't allow fear to play tricks on your mind and get uncommon favor from God and get uncommon results from God. You got to tell fear you have no place here in my heart and in my home and in my mind. Fear you have no place here. So they were fearful. And notice verse 27, but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be fearful, be afraid. I'm just trying to check and see who's multitasking. <laughs> be fearful, be afraid. No, that's not what he said. He said, but straightway Jesus, verse 27 of Matthew chapter 14, straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. In other words, he was saying, put a smile on your face. Get happy. Get ready. Get ready to receive. He says, it is I, be not afraid. Now, what was Jesus doing here? Let me give you a couple of points. Point number one, Jesus was creating an atmosphere of faith. <laughs> he was creating an atmosphere of faith in verse 27. Number two, in that atmosphere of faith, uncommon things could happen in their lives. In other words... If he had not created the atmosphere of faith, they would never believe who he was. And it could have produced some dangerous results because they needed the wind and the waves to cease in order for them to survive. God has to create an atmosphere of faith in our lives in order for us to be able to experience uncommon favor and uncommon results. If you have an atmosphere of fear in your home, that stuff is not going to work out, that things are going to fall apart, that things are not going to happen the right way, then guess 
why they won't happen the right way, baby. Jesus understood in order for them to go further, in order for them to learn the lesson of uncommon favor and results, he had to, amen, create an atmosphere of faith. And in order to do that, he had to cast out all fear. The Bible says that perfect love, God's love, does what? Cast out all fear. Verse number 27 is a very pivotal verse. It's a very powerful verse. I, I want to submit to you, it's just as powerful as Jesus walking on the sea. Because, see, for Jesus to walk on the sea, that, that was uncommon for them, but it wasn't uncommon for God. <laughs> Anything that God's going to do in terms of uncommon favor and uncommon results in your life, trust and know, it's not uncommon to God. It's just uncommon to us. Because it takes us a while to catch up with what God wants to do in our lives. You know why it takes us a while? Because we see the winds, we see the waves, we see the storm, we see the challenges, we see the hardship, we see the pain, and we are just like the disciples. We want to stand above. We want to have fear. We forget who Jesus is in our lives. But Jesus understood if they were ever going to get the uncommon, they had to first be in an atmosphere where faith ruled and reigned. Go back to 27, verse 27. It says, be of good cheer. Somebody need to underline that. It's in the red in my Bible. Be of good cheer. Then it says, be not afraid. Well, we talked about be not afraid. Because fear is, an, is, is the enemy of our faith. It's a contaminated faith. But be of good cheer. Why would he say be of good cheer? I want to submit to you that when you, when you study out the word cheer. Cheer. Have you ever seen a cheerleader? <laughs> a cheerleader. Amen. Is, is, is almost like they're chanting. Or they're singing. But what they're, de and they're declaring, but what they're chanting, singing, and declaring is to help the team win. Yes, yes. It's to motivate the crowd to get involved with the action on the field. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. A cheerleader doesn't cheer so that the crowd could go to sleep on the basketball game. A cheerleader doesn't cheer so that the crowd could go to sleep on the football game. No, a cheerleader turns to the crowd and begins to do that little pom pom and that little shake shake and they do all of that stuff so that you can get involved with the action on the field. Jesus said, be a good cheer. I need you to get involved with what I'm doing. I need you to get involved with the common favor and uncommon results that I'm trying to show you. In other words, he was telling them to be like cheerleaders. Hallelujah. He wanted them to cheer him on. He wanted them to connect with this uncommon move of God. This walking on the sea, something that they had never seen in their entire life. You know how we get involved, how we cheer, how we cheer God on through our praise and our worship. That's what I said in the beginning. I said, amen. See, praise is a part of setting that atmosphere. That's why we don't turn it on and off. We, we, we are constantly in a, a realm or a mindset of thanking and praising God. We're constantly in a realm or a mindset of worshiping God. Even at 3 o'clock in the morning, I want to challenge some people today. God is expecting some of us to set our alarm clock to 3 a.m. and get up and worship him. Now that's some uncommon stuff. That's some uncommon actions. And I decree and declare if you're willing to amen they get out of your flesh and get into the spirit of the living God he will produce uncommon results in your life well I gotta get up and go to work well I'm tired I watch TV till midnight do you want the common or do you want what's uncommon Are you going to be a cheerleader for the Lord? 
Are you going to be a cheerleader for the word of God? Are you going to, be, are you going to act like you're on the other team? Because see, while the cheerleaders on our team are cheering, the other side, they're cheering against us. Come on. Which side are you on? Come on? Are you on the Lord's side? Or are you on the side, amen, that's working against what God is trying to do? Yeah. Everybody say uncommon. uncommon. Uncommon, uncommon. Notice, it says, again in verse 27, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. In other words, get happy. Get excited. Amen. Forget about the trouble waters. Forget about the turbulence. Forget about the storms that are going on in your life. And focus on me. That's uncommon, church. People of God, that's uncommon. Because that requires you to get out of your natural self Get out of your natural mind and take on the mind of Christ. That's uncommon. Yes. Notice verse 28. And Peter answered and answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Wow. <laughs> now, Peter, amen. Peter he was now catching on because the atmosphere had been set. Peter, amen, was catching on because the atmosphere of praise and worship had been set. Because the atmosphere of faith had been set. And because of that, he was saying, I want the same results, Jesus, that you are getting. If you are getting these results, I want these results. If it's, if it's working for you, I want it to work for me. How many of you are willing to say that today? Jesus was getting some uncommon results. And Peter said, I want some uncommon results. See, in the boat, that's common. And nothing wrong with that. The boat was a place of safety. But sometimes God is going to cause you to get out of your safety net. Get out of your comfort zone. And do some uncommon things. Have some uncommon actions to get some uncommon results. Wow. Wow. The disciples, look what happens. The disciples, when Peter gets out of the boat, they choose to stay in the boat. That's very key. Look at verse 28. Again, and Peter answered him, and, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. Jesus said, what? Come, in verse 29. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Mm. So now Peter did an uncommon thing, or he took some uncommon actions and steps. And now he was experiencing uncommon favor and results. Let me give you some further points. We understand that Peter walking on water was uncommon. In order to get uncommon favor and results, you must be willing to take uncommon actions or steps. In other words, when God begins to tell you to do something and it may not seem right in your natural mind, but you know it's God, guess what? You ought to do it. When God is telling you to move in a direction that your flesh don't want to move, you ought to move. Obeying Jesus, watch this, when he told the disciples to get in the boat and go to the other side, 
That was simply a common action. When the disciples went to the other side and they obeyed Jesus' command, that was a common action. It didn't take anything uncommon to obey the words of Christ for them to get in the boat. Yeah. However, when Peter got out of the boat, that was uncommon. Yeah. Let me break it down in terms that we can deal with. See, when we obey God in his word, that's simply a common action. Wow. There's, nothing, there's nothing uncommon about obeying God and his word because that's an expectation. That's an expectation. We're supposed to, if we're disciples of Christ, that means to be a follower of Christ. We're supposed to obey God and his word. See, walking on water was above and beyond obeying God and his word. Remember, the definition of common, uncommon was doing the exceptional thing was doing the thing that was above the ordinary. See, as believers, if you say, well, man, I, I, I serve God today or I, I live for God today, that's common. God expects you to do that every day. <laughs> you expect uncommon results out of obedience? You, amen, must understand that you serve God because he's God. God expects that out of you. So I would submit to you, amen, that you ought to do what's common before you can even enter into the realm of the uncommon. Yes. You ought to be already at a place or striving to be at a place where you obey God in his word because you know that's the expectation of God for your life. For Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll obey my word. That's the common thing to do. The disciples did the common thing. They got in the boat. They obeyed Jesus. But Peter did the uncommon thing when he stepped up out of the boat. When he, when he jumped out on the water. He did what was uncommon. I need to make that emphasis. I need to make that clear. We're not talking just about you doing common things. We're talking about uncommon actions producing uncommon results above the ordinary extraordinary above the norm let me give you some other examples see tithing is a common action you say well i'm gonna pay my time and, I, and i'm gonna get i'm gonna get uncommon that no 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 you ought to pay your time because you love god <laughs> but let me help you out but giving above and beyond your time, now that's uncommon action. <laughs> See, if you haven't even first got to step one, hey amen, how you expect uncommon favor and uncommon results? Because that's above the ordinary. Tithing is ordinary. For the believer, hey amen, the Bible already tells us that. Uncommon is when you're already doing what's common according to the word of God, and now you're willing to step out into another realm and another dimension. Let me help you out with something else. See, praying is, un is common action. When Jesus prayed on the mountainside, nobody better than I at that. But my God, when he was at 3 o'clock in the morning praying, <laughs> ah, that, now that's uncommon. <laughs> that's uncommon, amen. When you fast and pray for 30 days, now that's uncommon because now you're getting beyond your flesh. You're getting beyond the ordinary and you're saying, God, want that uncommon favor and I'm willing to do the extraordinary to get it I want some uncommon results and I'm willing to do the extraordinary things to get it that's what Peter was saying when he got out of the boat he was saying God I, 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 I'm obeying you I'm in the boat you told us to get in the boat I'm in the boat Ah, but the boat it's good, but it's not good enough for me anymore. I want to get out of this boat. I want to, I want to walk like you walk. <laughs> I want to experience the same results you're getting. I want to get what, amen, the others in the boat refuse to get. Because watch this. There will be many that will just 
set up for the common. Remember there were 12 disciples. Did, 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 did God put, did Jesus put a stipulation on just one jumping out of the boat? No. In fact, he never said for any of them to get out of the boat. In other words, when you do something uncommon, you have to make up in your heart and in your mind that you are going to go beyond the ordinary, that you have a desire for the extraordinary moves of God. That's something you have to do. Twelve, eleven of them stayed in the boat. One of them decided to jump out. One of them decided to jump out into the troubled waters. Wow. Now I want to submit to you that the 11 were in God's will but they didn't get uncommon results. Yeah. Wow. See, you can be in God's will wow. and still not get uncommon results. Yeah. Uncommon results are when you even are in God's will but you desire even more of God than just doing the basic things that he asks of you. Wow. You got to really get this. Yeah. Wow. God said, he said to me, if my people are not first doing what's common, then how can they expect uncommon results in favor? If you're not first doing the last thing God told you to do, how can you expect God to do, do something new and exceptional and extraordinary? I want to challenge you that if you're not doing the common things, start doing the common things. <laughs> Amen. And then as you begin, if you're not praying consistently, I don't even, I'm not even talking about getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning. If you're not praying consistently every day, start praying consistently every day. Oh, yes. Amen. And as you begin to pray consistently every day, yes. amen, the spirit of God will begin to move on your heart like he did with, with, with Peter. And you'll be like, God, you know what? I've been praying, amen, consistently. I want to now, I'm ready to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm ready to lose some sleep for you, God. I'm ready. I want to hear from you more. I, 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 there's too many distractions at 9 o'clock in the evening in my house. All the kids are running wild. Every TV is on. Everybody's on social media. But God, I want to see the uncommon results. So I'll get up at 3 o'clock in the morning when all of them are asleep and I will get in your presence because I am after some uncommon favor. I am after some uncommon results. God, I need a breakthrough and I know I got to do more than what I'm doing to get it. Now that's uncommon. That's uncommon. You sitting in your house, amen, praying while you watch TV, that's common. <laughs> you sit in your house reading the word and on Facebook at the same time, that's common. You sitting in your house watching me and watching TV right now, that's common. But God is not talking about common things. No, he's talking about uncommon things. He's talking about us doing the uncommon in order to get uncommon results and favor. How many of you want that from God? Yes. Wow. Yes. Come on, I'm almost out of time, my God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's go back to the text. Notice verse 29. And he said, come, Matthew 14 and verse 29. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he, he did what? He walked on the water to go to Jesus. In other words, he was doing some uncommon things or he was producing uncommon actions and he was getting uncommon results and favor. Verse 30, but when he saw the wind, ah, boisterous, he was afraid mm, and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. 
And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of great faith. You have had great faith, Peter. He didn't say that, did he? He said, O thou of little faith. Wherefore did thou doubt? Or why on earth did you doubt me? <laughs> Let's turn over to Hebrews. Amen. Chapter 12. And we're going to tie this in. I want to submit to you that even in the midst of doing uncommon things or, or doing uncommon actions, it doesn't mean the enemy would not try to take your eyes off of God. This is a warning to the church. When you get to that place where you're ready to step out of the boat, and do extraordinary things. Trust to know that the enemy is going to test to see if you really are ready to do extraordinary things. Peter, he was, he was clicking on all cylinders. He was, he was doing everything uncommon, extraordinary. Mm -hmm. and, and the devil decided, let me stir up this win again. <laughs> Let me, let me create this intensity in his life, this storm. Let me, let me get him to think about his death or failure. Because death means failure, ultimate failure. And he got Peter to take his eyes off of Jesus. Just for a second, just for a moment. And when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. He began to slip. Fear, just that quick, entered into his heart even after Jesus had already created an atmosphere where they kicked fear out. Yes. Just that quick, he flipped. I want to warn you, as you, amen, begin to take the journey of, of, of seeking God for the uncommon results, the uncommon favor, don't think that the devil won't test you to see if you're for real or not. Yes, he will. He will test you to see if you are for real or not. So I want to give you these parting words in Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to continue with this series uh, next week. But I want to give you these parting words in Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. And we're going to look at verse number 2. And I want to also read this today. In the, we're going to read it in the King James. But I want to also read it. In the Passion Translation. We're going to first do the King James. And I got to get the Passion Translation pulled up. Amen. But we're going to read it in the King James first. And then we'll read it in the Passion Translation. So. Notice what it says in the King James. Looking unto Jesus. <laughs> the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. This is where Peter failed. He failed when he took his eyes off of Jesus. But this is where you got to succeed. <laughs> the Bible says... The Hebrew writer says that we ought to look unto who? Jesus. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. When you have that kind of faith, remember Jesus told Peter when he was looking away from him and looking at the storm that was raging, he said, oh ye of little faith, why have you doubted? Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. But there's three enemies. There's three enemies that come to disrupt and tear down your faith. One of them we've already talked about. That's fear. But the second enemy is doubt. You remember Jesus said in Matthew uh, 14, he said, 
Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And the second, the third is unbelief. That's the first cousin of doubt. <laughs> Fear, doubt, and unbelief will undercut you from doing uncommon actions, uncommon things. But when you look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith, amen, you will never put your eyes on fear. You will never doubt and you will never stop believing that God can do the supernatural in your life. Let me read it to you in the Passion Translation. It says, we look away from the natural realm. Ah, <laughs> see, see, that's the, that, this is my closer right here. He says, we look away from the natural realm. That's the opposite of what Peter did, isn't it? When Peter was looking at Jesus, was he looking in the natural realm or the supernatural realm? Supernatural. When he was walking on the water, was he operating in the natural realm or the supernatural realm? But when he looked down, what realm was he looking at? The natural. The problem with us is we want to be common when God is trying to tell us to be uncommon. See, the common realm is full of natural things, but the supernatural realm is full of uncommon things. This is why we've got to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says here in the Passion Translation, we look away from the natural realm. We fasten and gaze unto Jesus. You you gotta look away from the natural realm. You gotta look away from the realm that tells you to remain the same. That tells you that God cannot come through for you. And you gotta tap into the supernatural realm. The realm of faith, the realm of uncommon favor, and the realm of uncommon results. As I close today, the Lord told me, he said, he said, son, he said, call a fast. I shared this with the intercessors on Wednesday when we were here. And I'll just briefly share, but he said, call a fast. He said, a 30-day fast. He said, a 30-day fast. He said, because my people who call, who are called by my name, they're too busy looking in the natural realm. And this is why they're not getting uncommon favor and uncommon results. So over the next several weeks, we're going to be preparing ourselves for a fast. It's going to be a corporate fast. And there are going to be some things that we're going to ask you to do in that fast that God has already revealed. I'm not going to share it all right now. I'm out of time. But I'm just dropping a little nugget right now to prepare your hearts. This fast is for uncommon favor and uncommon results. This fast is not for those that want to stay in the boat and remain common. This fast is not for those that want to continue to have fear, doubt, and unbelief in their hearts. No, ma'am, no, sir. This fast or for those that are like Peter, they're ready to get out of the boat or whatever situation they're in right now. And they're ready to see the extraordinary manifest in their life. I want to submit to you today that God is absolutely wanting to show you the extraordinary before 2020 is over. He's wanting to show you things above what your natural mind can comprehend and what your natural mind can understand. And I believe by faith, if you will connect with his word, you will connect with the supernatural realm. Amen. I believe by faith, if you're doing the common things of obedience and prayer and, 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 and tithing and all of those other common things, you, amen, are a prime candidate for the uncommon favor and results that God wants you to experience in this last half of 2020. It's not over for you and your family. 
It's not over. The dreams and the visions are not over. God is saying the uncommon is absolutely available to you right now. And we're going to do an uncommon fast. And we're going to seek God like Peter did. To get out of the boat of where we are right now. And walk on the water. To have that water walking faith. To see the supernatural manifest in our lives. Let us pray. Father in the name of Jesus. We thank you this on this Sunday morning God. For this series entitled Uncommon, Uncommon, Uncommon. Stir up the heart of your people. Stir up the heart of your people, God. That they will begin to desire the uncommon favor. <laughs> the uncommon results. That only you can provide. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. For divine breakthrough, <laughs> as we prepare our hearts and our minds through the teaching of your word, even in pre preparation for this prayer and fasting season, God, that the uncommon would begin to manifest in our lives. Now, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone that's listening under the sound of my voice that has never received you as Lord and Savior of their life, ah, we want to extend the opportunity for them to do so right now. If you're listening and you say, I want the uncommon, I want the uncommon, I, want, I don't want what's natural, I want what's supernatural. Well, it starts with a foundation in Christ. It starts... If you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, it starts with that commitment, that dedication to give your life to the Lord. That's you right now as I'm speaking. Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Dear God, I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross for my sins and I ask you now God to forgive me of my sins to cleanse me of all unrighteousness to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior if you pray that simple prayer I want to submit to you that you are now a born again believer now it's time that you connect with a church family a body of believers with a shepherd a pastor that can feed you the word of God that can minister to you and your family we want to invite you to go to our website at lovefellowshipchurchcharlotte.org go to the contact page and on that contact page you can put in your information and we can receive a request from you to contact you if you desire to connect love with Love Fellowship as a member even if you're at home you can become an e-member we're opening up that opportunity for you to do so. You can, again, go to the website. There's an e-membership tab. There's a contact tab. You can send us your information. We can, amen, respond back promptly to you where we can connect with you. Amen. God wants you. See, that's common. Uh, 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 membership is common. We all to have, amen, a local uh, church home a local amen fellowship of believers that we are connected to the bible says that that's common you got to do the common things in order to get to the place where you start doing the uncommon things becoming a disciple of christ that that's a common step of of, of becoming a believer a disciple amen and then it prepares you for the uncommon action that God really wants to do in your life beyond the ordinary in the realm of the extraordinary if you desire to give today we want you to have this opportunity 
You can give three ways. Amen. Your tithes, your offerings, your gifts of love. You can give online by through our website. You can also mail in your gifts. And that mailing address is also on the Love, Church, Love Fellowship Church website. Or you can come live to the service. We'll open up live for you to come. 1030 on Sundays. And you can give in live service. We've got three ways for you to give. As I close out in prayer today. We pray that your heart is encouraged. And we pray that you be of good cheer. We pray that you prepare yourself. To produce uncommon actions. In order to get uncommon results. And uncommon favor from the Lord. Let us close out in prayer. Father we thank you for the word. We thank you for the. For the people of God that have tuned in by way of Facebook, by way of YouTube, we thank you for those that are here in live service. We plead the blood of Jesus right now that you move in a mighty miraculous way. That you get the glory and the honor out of our lives, Lord. And Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this, this series, Uncommon. Because we just don't want the ordinary. We want the extraordinary. We want to see it, we want to believe it, and we want to walk it out by faith. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Bye-bye.